it's, it's unbelievable that nobody lost their life. There was no forewarning that this was happening or occurring. You know, seconds, they had seconds to get out. We had one young woman that was trying to get out. Um, her tires just melted right there. These things can move 30, 60 miles an hour down a road, and you're not going to run or get out of their way if they're, if they're coming at you. It was very scary, and and I, it was bad. One one lady said, "There is no God." The wind was so bad they couldn't control the fires, and that's why it jumped from home to home. I was living close to the canyon, and it came up the canyon, and I had no chance. You know, when you lose your home and lose everything in it when you've been married for 55 years, that's, you lose a lot. I cried. Where, where was I going to get a home again? And I lost everything, everything. I didn't even have a spoon left. If I didn't have the Lord, I couldn't have done it. I thank God for sparing me. I could have been in that home. It just looked like the moon. It was just nothing but gray, everything burnt. It's not the material stuff. I think it's more of the, um, the recipes, the pictures, all the things that, that you know people are supposed to be prepared. You don't think about it until you go to make the, you know, the Christmas pies or the Christmas cookies and those recipes aren't there. A lot of people didn't believe it, even my own mother. She didn't bring any of her personal belongings, any of her jewelry, nothing, because she really didn't think it was going to happen because we've been through this before. And I think that uh, that was part of the problem that people just didn't expect it to, to hit us. came to a, a conclusion that there was a need to have something in place for our tribal community. There wasn't a lot there for our tribal governments and our tribes to really hold on to. So we uh, brought some of the tribes together to talk about the concept of putting on or developing a long-term recovery group. Something's going to happen, whether it be fire, whether it be earthquake or floods or something. And that was the idea that you know, we had to, to put this organize, organization together to, you know, be a resource, uh, not necessarily in the, the first responder, but for the long-term recovery. A disaster is not a quick, simple fix. It is a long-term, ongoing endeavor. And our communities have been hit by fires more than once. This is, this, in 07, it was not the first time we'd ever been affected. So the tribes came together with an understanding that Unified, we will be successful, and if we try to take things on on our own, we won't. Oftentimes in disaster situations, you have so many people coming together that want to help, but the problem that happens is that all those people don't understand that they're duplicating each other's efforts. What we're trying to do with the Intertribal Long-Term Recovery Foundation is provide a hub so that all the resources that outside entities and um, helpers want to provide to tribes during their time of need that we have a way to constructively facilitate how to make sure those resources get to where they need to be. What we've learned going through disaster after disaster after disaster is that when the cameras go away and the press goes away and even some of the money goes away, we're still here and we still have to deal with the problems. The biggest problem I have in a disaster is I get false information. So having to lay us and having people right out there in the situation that can add to correcting the wrong information and give you more accurate information makes for better decision making. It isn't that I have all the resources they need or we have great information and can answer all the questions. It's that we're there, one human helping another human being in the situation they're in. After the fires burned through, the utilities naturally were down, all utilities, electricity, uh, telephone, and we didn't recover our phone service until uh, uh, the first part of January. Working with FEMA was a very frustrating process. That's where the Intertribal Long-Term Recovery Foundation was actually born out of that frustration. We decided, well, maybe we should form our own uh, FEMA-type uh, uh, organization. It costs money for hotels. It costs money for transportation. It costs money for food. 
all of these things are just the basic essentials of everyday living. And when you lose that, you have to have some type of a means to replace it. Most families are not geared to uh, have a large amount of money in the bank to provide for them, uh, a, for themselves, a place to live for several months or a year while the insurance companies and whatever organization is trying to figure out how to help them rebuild their homes. It, it, so the fundraisers are necessary. They're necessary uh, to have the ability to be able to ra raise funds to provide the needs. It's a terrible situation to be in and uh, you get caught off guard and when the Santa Ana winds and Mother Nature speaks, there's, there's no control in her. She, if she wants to blow, she's going to blow. And really, and if you think about it, when disaster happens, it, it knows no bond boundaries. Whether it's outside the reservation, inside the reservation, it has no boundaries. We've got to be able to survive. And this is it's just a matter of surviving. When you don't have water for 10 days, when you don't have electricity for three weeks, I mean, that's, that's surviving out there. I mean, without food and what you have in your stores, because everything is closed. You can't get in and out of the reservation. You can't, it's just, it just uh, it's a blackout. And sometimes the smoke is so thick you can't see two feet in front of you. We don't have anybody behind us, it's just us. And so it's, it's, it is a matter of survival for us.